giving a little teaser or jumping ahead a little with this machine. Uh, we still have a lot of soldering to do uh, but I managed already to solder the warning light cable and the 9 pin D sub connector that also acts as the RS485 connection to the computer and of course because I got the uh, RS485 to USB uh, adapter from uh, Baxidium website okay we have a the machine is ready or the generator is ready I laid it on some blocks so there's a little gap here so air can circulate if needed there's a little fan underneath I have my computer ready I've already installed all the software needed and tested that they do work and the manual under section 10 PC software installation uh, you need the driver for the, the, the USB connector just visit the website listed on here download the proper version for your computer for me it was a Windows X64 so 64-bit computer that I have for some reason the, if you plug that in Windows already knows what that thing is, the FTDI chip and installs a, well it's not a latest driver so it installs a driver but I went to the settings in the control panel found my devices and from there it was a, just a matter of pointing that I have a new driver so in the manual you can find this picture and in there you can click on it and select uh, update driver and just feed the driver to it that was downloaded from the ftdichip.com so that gets you the latest version of that. Then was uh, this BX17 dashboard application that you require to control that thing unless you write your own. Uh, it was very easy just download the zip. There was nothing else in it except the BX17 dashboard.x. Uh, I just downloaded it to some file and the most important part download the material library file, the JSON file and put it into the same folder as the dashboard X, XE application otherwise it won't run, it will give you an error um, then there was a serial terminal used to send queries or commands to the machine and termite was uh, suggested. It's a very good application for this thing. There's a whole bunch of others also that do work. Just use the same settings. Then it jumps basically to section 11 how to operate the machine. There's some limits but the dashboard application already knows the limits and it will flash red on all, all things and it will not let you input wrong values because uh, there's a frequency current uh, diagram that basically the higher frequency the lower the uh, current and it's a matter of well what the electronics can handle and what is physically possible Okay, um, I think I'll go and see what the machine looks like. This is the first time ever I'm 
plugging that thing on. It is required to turn the generator on and open the serial port number of the USB RS485 virtual COM port. And press open in the software. Let's try it. You never know. Until you find something. Here we can see the actual dashboard application. It's showing the R core configuration library, basically the three inputs that were in the JSON file. And you can uh, apparently update it from here. Add new config, just save your own settings for uh, job specific settings or material specific settings or whatever you require. So let's see what happens. When we go to the control tab, so we have this. This is all standard uh, default values uh, already in there. And uh, fingers crossed. Nicely quiet. See what. Happens. Serial port has been opened. So if I get config. Okay. okay. I believe there's a, some default values in, in there. If I click get config, those should basically get back to what it was. Interesting. The application crashes. Oh boy. Config. Okay. Okay, so we're trying now the termite uh, program with all the information given in the manual, there's all the commands. So if I type power I've got zero zero. Reports the DC power used by the internal power supplies. Okay. Uh, I type settings. If I say current. <clears throat> I'm not getting anything out of this. Didn't go as planned. I had my <laughs> data leads switched, so nothing broken. It just it doesn't work. The software crashes 
after a few seconds or it just shuts down and the termite program just gives you in brackets double zero so nothing but now I switch the leads it should be now correct so let's try it again we have connection the current firmware version is 0 0.9.5 yes settings this is nice to get the settings in a easily easily readable format but I would suggest taking a garble approach like the GRBL the typical CNC controller for Arduino uh, and used in 3D printing also it actually has a very good uh, output format that is easy to parse in a program basically it gives all, all all these easily readable things as comments and everything else is standardized uh, uh, language so to speak so the big moment of truth if I type in EDM on I should get a light there if I don't get a light I may, may have the bulb connected the wrong way Let's try it. Holy shit, it works. <laughs> oh my god. We have power. Let's try turning it off. Yes. It works. It works. Okay, that's nice. Uh, I think I'll try the dashboard application again. Okay. Control, get config, it reads the same as before, good, and I love this so much, yay, it works, holy shit, now I can't wait to get this thing connected to my machine and my machine back up and running again. Because it's been on the dry dock for uh, quite some time now. Uh, it still requires some little details like uh, uh, the flushing needs to be improved. The wire is... Well, yeah, it's there. Let's put it that way. Uh, and also the control electronics the actual brains of the machine. I'm gonna try and test it, test this generator on my Arduino controller because nobody else has done such a controller and uh, now we have a, a very powerful generator that we can utilize and see where the limits are and uh, later on we'll be updating my machine also to have the K-flop board uh, on it as the CNC controller so it understands G-code, it understands reversing uh, it understands this uh, because Mike has been very generous of uh, offering the C code to operate the machine basically uh, how it reacts with the feed rate and from what I've seen in the videos, it's perfect. Anyway, um, this is it. Uh, basically, just a quick peek and teaser of what is about to come. I want to see what's inside the box because I'm curious and it will eventually come when there comes an update to the firmware and you need to open the box and connect the wires and press the buttons and do all sorts of stuff but let's see wow 
That's pretty. So let's see. So that's inside. Um, from what I know, you have the main power supplies. I think there were two amp units, 48 volts each. Yes. Then there's a the power comes here. There's a storage capacitors here. Uh, I think there's a the switching components are under this heatsink and uh, fan. Control board, so that's the brains of this box. Uh, it's a very high voltage, little 2.7 microfarad cap here. I'm not sure what what it's doing. It might be related to the output. Uh, just the current measurements for the output and uh, not sure what that is. There's some sort of inductor here. This may be a access the current limit. I'm not sure, I'm not the electronics guru, but nicely 3D printed uh, mounting hardware. That's the output con uh, connector. The sensing input. Normal power. And I think that might be yeah that's a 12 volt power supply for for, for for the fan there was a 12 volt fan here there's also one below somewhere in there you can Kind of make it out in there. It's a uh, one of those uh, duct fans, so it blows into the casing below and cool some component in there. Yeah. Um, very interesting looking device and very professional looking. Anyway, uh, that's for today's video. Uh, next time we'll probably see in my workshop. And try to hook this thing up. So, wish me luck. And thanks for watching. Bye.